Welcome back everyone to Inside Gyros. Um, today, back again in the Tercel from the uh, Aviation Art and Trend Deck. Um, I want to talk today, uh, before we take off, uh, and give a little bit of a uh, briefing of what we're doing today, is about the um, meeting from the FAA safety team um, and the presentation that Dr. Raul Salazar, PhD, uh, give us about sharing the sky and all the job and all the um, things that the FAST team, the, the, the FAA safety team in Florida is doing to help us share the sky with the gyroplanes. Um, the, the flight characteristics of the gyroplanes are a little bit different than the fixed wing or the helicopters. The fixed wing just keep a constant speed in the, in the traffic around. Um, they do the final a little bit lower because the, 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 the glide radio is, is, is way superior of the, um, uh, compared to the gyroplane. The helicopters take off and land from the, from the position. They normally taxi and they do the procedures, but normally they can just go ahead. For us, gyroplane operators, we variate. We have a different kind of procedures for the takeoff and for the landing. Additionally, our speeds are lower and the traffic can be shorter, uh, close to the, to the runway, for many reasons. The, the main reason is safety. So, um, join me today for this small explanation about Dr. Raul Salazar, um, about how to share the, the airspace, and I want to share you guys all what we talk about the, um, in, in the fast the FAA safety team uh, meeting and all the efforts that we're doing to keep us safe, to do not um, have any intermission with other traffics around, and everybody share the sky in a nice way. So, first we're going to do the pre-rotation. The pre-rotation in a gyroplane is the moment when we mechanically engage the rotor and start spinning to get our saucer, our first RPM you know, the frisbee. So we create our wings, let's say. This process normally takes um, position when we are aligned and ready for takeoff. That means it's a small delay on the takeoff. If there is another traffic in the pattern, they may have to do a go around or they have to understand that to extend a little bit the traffic. To avoid this kind of intermission on the normal flow of the traffic, and I'm talking about the, the guys who are learning, the fly schools. When you're learning, you, you try to keep it as, as, as nice and easy as is possible. So any delay or any different kind of uh, airplane, and, and this is a small message for, 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 for our friends who are, who are starting the, the aviation career, is not a problem, but I wanted to, to show you what we have to do for takeoff so we can share the space. Normally what I recommend to all my students is to wait until the traffic pattern is clear and you have more than 45 seconds to do the takeoff roll. So additionally of those, that small delay for the spin up, um, we should share it in the radio. It's very important to keep your radio on even if the, the runway like in Rockledge here or or in Merritt Island, or in, in any airport that you're um, training normally, that is a non-control airfield. Um, it's not required to talk about the radio, but the radio saves life. Understanding the traffic is very difficult to control all the aircraft, to see all the parameters, and also check around if there is one person going in and inside of the traffic. Normally, the FAA do not regulate the way the, the, traffic, the, the, the people get into the traffic. So there is some standard operations and where the rotor craft uh, should be, where the fixed wind should be. <clears throat> so it's, it's important for you to review those, uh, those limitations and those regulations, not just for the machine you fly, but also for the other ones we're flying, like power parachutes, um, sky divers, gyroplanes in this case, ultralights, etc. So what I want to explain today is how we do the takeoff, what we have to say right now in the radio to make sure that everybody understands what we're doing and what we're doing different from the takeoff 
to the traffic to the final. So the explanation takes going to take uh, place here in Rockledge that I can have my time to explain. Then I will invite you to, to make a traffic and the touch and go in, uh, in Merritt Island. And I will explain some of the suggestions that the FAST team, the FAA safety team, is uh, introducing to the operation of gyroplanes in the United States. And I believe it applies for many people around the world to understand how we can share the airspace. All right? So let's go for the, for the takeoff. Um, checklist is complete. We're ready to go. I'm going to do the announcement, the first announcement. I want to take um, good attention of the announcements that I'm going to do. This is an example. It doesn't mean this is obligatory, it's regulatory. Again, this is not an instructional video. It's just an example that I want to give you guys about gyroplanes and what we understand after these conversations on the FAST team. So, welcome back again to Inside Gyros. Uh, thanks for watching and let's go have a nice, nice fun. Rockledge traffic, gyroplane experimental November 313, taking one with 36 for uh, northeast departure. Um, additionally, small delay, 45 seconds for spin up. Rockledge traffic. All right. We remove the the rotor brake, we check our controls, the announcer are taking the runway, forward and around, lights, palm, transponder, goes to, on, we align on the runway and this is when the 45 seconds start over, because if someone is in the traffic they know I will have to stop right now and engage my pre-rotation, there we go. Okay, pre rotation engage. So you start counting. So this is the delay. When you say a small delay, the fixed wing pilots will think it's a couple seconds. But for us, it takes a little bit more than, I don't know, 30 seconds. As you see, when I'm talking, I'm still building the RPMs on the rotor. You see, 50, 60. Some gyroplanes, some models have a faster systems for, for takeoff, although it's a little bit longer than the normal takeoff for a fixed wind and definitely a longer takeoff than a helicopter. All right, 100, go 10 degrees back just to start building our inertia, 150, we're getting our saucer. Remember, we need at least 200 for our saucer. 190, all right, 200, one to three, one, Full back on the control and we start building the speed, checking our RPMs. All right, when the nose goes up, we go full power. We put the nose down, just remove. There we go, we are in the air. That delay on the takeoff, if somebody is in the traffic pattern, um, we'll understand that he will even start the final a little bit farther away or means that he's going to give us a little bit of, of space when we do the takeoff. Let me just trim a little bit my aircraft, keep climbing, 300. Alright, so what is really important here to, to understand is the, the space and the separation between the aircraft, alright? So I'm going to do a small right turn to clear the pattern. And we go for the second part of the, of the conversation, of the explanation. Normally gyroplanes, they make the patterns a little bit lower and closer to the runway. Why? Because in case something happened, being at certain level of the ground and closer to the runway will let us make a safe approach to the runway and try to hit the runway and not to go to some populated areas or some areas that are not designed for landings. So all right, we have 700 feet, we go for our cruise power, we retrim our, our aircraft. Uh, it's too much on the left. There we go. So 
I'm going to change the frequency and I'm going to, before entering the airspace of Merritt Island, I will check the AWOS that I already checked and I will listen the radio and see maybe there is someone flying, they will tell me what's the runway in use, what the preferred runway is in use and how I, I have to because we are the, the operators of the different machine, you know what I'm saying? So what I want to do is understand what procedures I have to do to separate myself and do not interfere with the other traffic. All right, we go to our Merritt Island. And with this, I put a little bit of volume so you can guys have some. Speeding the gyroplane is not a problem because we can go, we can, we can fly pretty slow. We can reduce our speed to 50 knots. 40 knots, and just keep it in the same altitude like I'm doing right now. So that's really, very important to understand. Right now, apparently, there is not many people in the pattern. So what I'm going to... Final landing runway six, Bruce Creek. All right, that's a different runway. There's a different frequency. All right, so what I recommend normally is to do the approach midfield 45 for the traffic. So I will announce myself before I go. Merritt Island traffic, gyroplane experimental, 313, inbound the station from the south, midfield crossing, 800 feet to the 45 on the left traffic, runway 11, Merritt Island. So what you see is I set my altitude, means that the other traffics around will look up or look down where I am. When another people, when other guys flying around, in a fixed wind, they hear, they hear an aircraft. Is if it's a fixed wind, normally they will be in the same level, so the eyes will go to the same level. But in a gyroplane, we can be lower, a little bit lower and closer. If I don't say my altitude, they will start looking, and they will not see me. Additional, we are small. We are way smaller. Although there is many bright colors and really crazy, you know, things that we have. But in this case, I'm a white gyroplane with no wings, with a big umbrella that is almost transparent, flying around. All right, closing to the runway. Just check visual traffic. Merritt Island traffic. Gyroplane experimental 313 is midfield crossing for the 45. On uh, left traffic, runway 11, Merritt Island. All right, so before we crossing, we set our altitude, all right? So as soon as I cross and I will join the pattern every single leg, we suggest to say the altitude. So the guys flying at 1,000 feet AGL of the traffic or 800, they will understand that I will be 700, 600. So instead of looking for the normal pattern that is the standard thing, they will look down and they will say, oh, there we go. That's the small guy flying with an umbrella. That's me, all right? So he will maintain the separation or I will understand what kind of separation I should take, all right? So additionally of this information, you can understand that fixed winds are faster, even helicopters can be faster. So it's better for us to let everyone go first. Let everyone go first. If everyone go first, you have clear space, all right? Let's join the downwind and we set our altitude. Merritt Island traffic, gyroplane experimental, 313, 700 feet, joining the left pattern for runway 11, downwind, Merritt Island. All right, now that we are in downwind leg, I will be a little bit closer normally for my safety, for my own safety. I will be a little bit closer on the traffic. So normally, and also the, the, the fixed winds, because they have better glide radio, they will start to find a little bit far away and lower. It's better for me to be a little bit closer and higher. So in case I lost my engine, my glide radio is three to one. It's the same like the space shuttle. So we need to dive like the space shuttle used to do it. All right, let's go for base. And we're gonna keep 600 feet right now. I'm gonna start descending. I'm gonna check if everything is ready for my landing. All right, Merritt Island traffic, gyroplane experimental 313 is on left base. 600 feet for uh, runway 11, Merritt Island. So saying my altitude also say that if someone is around, they understand that I will be higher in this point. I will be normally higher at this point, all right? In this point, 
because my glide radius is smaller, I need to be a little bit higher, so in case I lost my engine, I have enough altitude to dive and get into the runway. Merritt Island traffic, Charo Plain Experimental 313, final 500 feet for a touch and go, runway 11, Merritt Island. Alright, so this is what I'm saying, if you see in this camera, I guess you can understand that I'm way higher. So, in this case, if something happened, and I lose my engine, I just let the machine dive. Let the machine dive, I get my speed, secure my speed, and I just aim for my target. Just keeping the speed, if it's getting too, too fast, I just call it a little bit up. If it's getting too low, I just let the machine down a little bit. Just let the nose a little bit down. And I just keep no power, as you see. That's the idea. The final normal in a gyroplane is a little bit higher than the, than the fixed wind. All right, plea flare, wait for it. And we do the touchdown. All right, let's go again. In the takeoff, we're also a little bit slower than some aircraft. If someone is going to approach, I'm going to do the, 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 the touch and go or the go around. Of course, they have to go for the parallel area. And additionally, if I have high performance like in this aircraft, I can get just, you know, really, really high climb uh, 1,000 feet per minute climb in this kind of configuration of the aircraft already almost 400 feet I'm still clearing the runway so you have to be careful if someone is doing a go around or is circling the, the traffic all right let's do it again so we do a small summary Merritt Island traffic, Charoplane Experimental, turning left crosswind, runway 11, 400 feet, Merritt Island. Again, I say my altitude, I'm a little bit lower and I'm going to do a perform a, small, a, a shorter traffic. Again, it's for safety. So there is no one around. If someone is around, for example, entering the pattern, it's better for me to reduce the speed or make a 360, going around, or just go out or, or ask the other pilot, the fellow pilot, if he can stand a little bit, all right? Bird Island traffic, Gyroplane Experimental 313 is 600 feet on left downwind runway 11, Bird Island. Again, altitude is very important. Say your altitude all the time so they know where to look. Second, the speed. You can go at, right now on 50 knots, flying at 50 knots in the, in the pattern. There are some airplanes that do the pattern faster. If it's a twin engine, they will be overtaking me right now. So what the best thing to do is join and go out. Let the fast guys go first, and then you go after them. Do not interfere with another traffic. Not just for safety, it's also for cooperation. We all, we all appreciate, I used to fly twin engines also, and I will appreciate when when somebody just give me the pace and I just go and I don't have to, you know, put full flaps or just drop the gear and just put it in a really weird condition not to collide with the guy flying in an umbrella in the front. I understand that. I was a fixed wing operator. I can operate fixed wing. I was a twin engine pilot. So this kind of thing sometimes it removes you from the safety equation and it can generate some problems. All right, 700 feet, we're ready to do our landing and we're gonna perform the same. High, high, um, high altitude, uh, low power approach. Merritt Island, Gyroplane, Experimental 313, turning left base, 700 feet for uh, runway 11, Merritt Island. All right, this is what I'm saying. This is all the things that I want to tell you. And the takeoff, tell how much time you will take. 30 seconds, 40 seconds, normally it's better a little bit more, so they will understand in this case that ju -ju -ju -ju, the gyroplane is, is, is is, is doing the, 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 the takeoff on the pre rotation. Second, Merritt Island traffic, Gyroplane Experimental 313 on high rate descent, 700 feet on final for runway 11, touch and go. Merritt Island. All right, so also the gyroplanes are small, some angles on these finals. If if I am in the in the runway and I'm in the in the straps, in the white straps, in the initial in the threshold of the runway, it will be very difficult to see it in some conditions. Additionally, the fixed wing, they have 
block sometimes so they have to dive. They normally the attitude is this way. So they they, they block some of the areas. So if if they if, if you don't talk in the radio and you don't tell that you are you, 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 you per rotating your umbrella, you're getting your saucer, well, the guy will not see you. And if you're not talking on the radio and the guy is listening on the radio and nobody's listening, well that can be an accident. That can be something that you want to avoid. Alright? So we just have enough altitude and you see, this is a safe altitude. This is a very safe altitude for me. This is a very good altitude. Because I'm, I'm, I'm just almost idle and I'm just letting the machine dive. And it's very safe altitude for me. But I do have to understand that my safety procedure is it a little bit interfere with the normal operation of the other aircraft. So I have to be respectful and understand that maybe there is uh, there's some students let me do the touchdown here. There we go. Oh, a little bit of balloon. And let's do the horse maneuver. Not let them not let the nose wheel down. Let's put the power again. We're in the air. You get the seconds. Be be wide speed. And let the machine climb. So be in your radio. Be safe check your perimeters, announce what you're doing. Tell the people, because not everyone is an expert on gyroplanes. Tell everyone what you're doing. Tell how much time you will need for per rotation. And you will always be safe, you can share the airspace, and everybody will be happy, all right? So, thanks for watching. I know this is a small video. Uh, let me just tell that I'm leaving the pattern. Red Island traffic, gyroplane experimental, climbing to uh, 700 feet, leaving the pattern to the south. Red Island. Um, I want to invite you guys again uh, for the Florida Gyro uh, Alliance. All right. So I want to invite you if you if you're a fixed wing pilot and you want to experience the gyroplane, uh, come to Florida. Uh, get proficient in a gyroplane, take the weekend package, stay with us, learn about gyroplanes. We have all models from uh, tandem to side-by-sides, uh, different brands. It's, uh, we want to show you the real experience so you can compare the models, which one is better, uh, which one is better for you, I mean, uh, which one is more comfortable, have more performance, etc., etc. So, thanks for watching. Come to Rockledge, learn about gyroplanes, check out